Please welcome Andy McNamara. I'm lucky today to get to moderate a panel on The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, and so without further ado, I will introduce people that I, I know it's a little cliche, I don't think, think need introduction. Um, we have Neil Druckmann, um, writer, director. We have Ashley Johnson, plays Ellie. And we have Troy Baker, Joel, The Last of Us. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Oh my living oh, God. Man. That's a oh, lot man. of people. <laughs> we love you! <laughs> Woo! So I think everyone was as surprised as I was this morning when they showed us Last of Us 2. So I, 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 think, uh, I think the first thing we should do is we should watch the trailer again. And, and <laughs> let's do it? All right, <laughs> let's see it. This place is packed. It's <laughs> crazy. I think they've got it here somewhere. Thank you. So do I, right? <laughs> so, how are you guys? Going? I mean, we can pantomime it, but I don't know if it'll be as good. Let's just act it out, Troy. Let's do it. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Are we talking about how we were backstage? Uh, I'm sorry? Were we talking about how we were backstage? Uh, yeah, I mean, I believe we were talking about this. Two words. First word sounds like. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right, I'm gonna hold Wait, my phone. Wait, did you on ask a head. question, or are we gonna watch the? Did I, I thought we were gonna watch the trailer. Okay, okay. Are we gonna yeah, watch the trailer? Do, but I, it's I, going I, this great. It's gonna be firing over. So here we go. Yay. The shadow of death And I fear no evil Because I'm blind to it all In my mind, my gun, they comfort me Because I know I'll kill my enemies When they come Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life And I will dwell on this earth forevermore Said I walk beside the still waters and they restore my soul But I can't walk on the path of the right because I'm wrong No, I can't walk On the path of the right Because I'm wrong What are you doing, kiddo? You really gonna go through with this? I 
I'm gonna find. And I'm gonna kill. Every last one of them. Holy God. <laughs> so I know I can't be the only one in the crowd that I, 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 I had shivers watching that the first time. It, it really was, it was, it was quite powerful. But uh, uh, that is quite the statement there in the end, that I'm going to find them and kill them. All of them. Could you, could you tell us who are we going to find? Uh, uh -oh. What are we doing here? We're going to start there. Uh, <laughs> let's see how I do this dance. Um, yeah, if, if the first game was really like the core of it, the theme was about the love between these two characters and how we build that through story, music, interaction, gameplay, mechanics. Um, this story is the counter of that. The story is about hate and how we use all those same things to make the player feel that um, through Ellie this time. First game is like you play as Joel. This, this game you're playing as Ellie. Uh, <laughs> And that is all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> I kind of figured, but I knew I needed to ask. Um, so, uh, you know, for, for you two, I mean, I, I know from playing the first game, it was a, it was a powerful experience, and, and, and the characters are, are just, I, I mean, they're, they're in a good way taxing to play. You know, the world is always heavy on you. How does it feel to be back, to be back as, as, as <laughs> I mean, Joel and Ellie are, are two amazing characters. What's it like to bring them back to life? It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I, I think when we were shooting the trailer, um, it's amazing how fast you can, we, we jump back into it. And um, I knew I, I missed playing her, but I didn't realize how much. And I think we've also been waiting for this day since the day we wrapped the first game. And I'm so fucked. I'm so glad it's finished. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Ellie. <laughs> I'm so glad yeah. it's here. <laughs> it was, uh, today's been incredibly emotional um, for all of us, and, and I know that this is a day of celebration for everybody at Naughty Dog because this has been just tireless work for everybody, and all of us have been trying to keep it under wraps, but it's exactly what Ashley said. It, you know. We kept asking, when are we going to do this? When are we going to come back? What's the story? And um, I remember the first time that Neil actually sat down and kind of said, okay, here's what I'm thinking. And we were at the Baptist. We were standing outside of a bar in London. Um, and I was just, it, it was so weird to hear about this thing actually maybe being real. And that's one level of it. And then you, uh, okay, we're going to go and we're going to shoot the trailer. And that's another level of it. And the first time that we walked back on stage, and it wasn't Ashley there anymore, and it wasn't Troy, but it was Joel walking down that hall and finding Ellie. Um, it, it was overwhelming. It, that's, and I'm not using a platitude. It literally was overwhelming to, to be in those shoes again. And I, I don't think that I'm Joel or that Joel is me. Ellie isn't Ashley. Ashley isn't Ellie. These are two real people to us. These are, these are flesh and blood characters that every once in a while, they're kind enough to just let us see the world through their eyes. And to be able to see the world again, and specifically that world again, through Joel's eyes was, my heart could, could barely hold it. And today, sitting in the crowd with you guys and experiencing it for the first time here, um, we were in tears, uh, and there's nothing that made it feel more worth it. All the, all the lies that we've had to tell over the last two and a half years. Um, oh man, I lied so much. Lied so much. <laughs> um, but when we heard your applause, when you saw that Firefly logo, and when you saw Ellie, and you heard her voice, and you heard Joel's voice, we can't thank you guys enough, because that made every second that we've had to wait worth it. <laughs> so thank you. So I think there's an interesting choice in name here, part two. So we, we've got The Last of Us, 
part two. What, what, what does it mean, part two? Where are we? Where are we in the story of Ellie and Joel? Uh, we're a few years after the events of the first game. Ellie is now 19. Uh, it, it, so much thought went into this, and I know there's a lot of people that feel this trepidation about coming back to these characters and revisiting what that ending means and, ho and worrying whether that's going to spoil the first game. And you have to understand, we feel all those things as well. Like, <laughs> no one loves these characters more than we do, and we would not do this if we didn't feel like we had the right idea. Uh, and the part two is really kind of doubling down on that to say we believe in this so much. It's not, we're not trying to avoid it. And we, we like, I've played with so many of the ideas that had different characters and it never felt right. The Last of Us is about the, these two characters specifically. Um, so yeah, the part two is, it's, it's saying this is going to be a larger story. This is a, a complementary story to the first game, but the two together are going to tell this much larger tale. Uh, and all I ask is the fans of the first ones, put some faith in us, trust us, we're going to do right by you. So. <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> you know, I feel that, that Naughty Dog is, is um, always pushed the envelope on how characters and narrative are developed and, and a part of game and, and, and just so integral to the experience and, and, and define everything you do in the games. I mean, you, you three... I mean, it's funny, you're like old friends when, I, when, when you get together. And, and so I, it's like, can you tell us all about like, working together to create and bring these characters to life when you're on the soundstage, when you're, when, you're, when you're bringing it out? I mean, do you ever just look at Neil and go, okay, I would never say this. I, you know, never in a million years would, would Ellie do this. I mean, like, what is that experience like? I mean, it, this was, I, I think, one of the reasons why this project is so near and dear to me, and I know both of us, is... It, it felt collaborative, and I think a lot of the time, like when we would come to shoot the scenes, we would have a day of rehearsal where we would talk about the scenes and comb through them, and Neil would say, you know, how do you feel about this line, or do you feel like this is something that she would say, and um, just sort of going through it and seeing what feels honest and real for the character. And I mean, it's an experience that I, I don't know if I've ever really had. And, you know, the, the subject matter and the stuff that we're going through in the scenes that we're doing, you know, as an actor, your job is to, to go there and to, to put your emotions on the floor and bleed on the floor. And when you do that and you go there emotionally with someone, you can't help but have a connection with the people that you're working with. So it's... I, I've had some of the most powerful experiences just working on this game, and that's why it's so close to me. And that's why I've just, I, oh man, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's, all of us, oh please. But what's cool is for me is like when, when these guys come by Naughty Dog, because it's not just us, it's like the entire team, we work on this game for years at a time, and you're put, putting so much of yourself and you're sacrificing so much to make this statement of sorts. Uh, and these guys come by to like every get together there is at Naughty Dog. They really feel like part of the Naughty Dog family, and um, uh, that's I feel like that's rare. And that's that was what, one of the main reasons of wanting to come back is to work with these with these guys again. That's awesome. I've said that um, a lot of people ask a lot of times, "What's your favorite character? Is Joel your favorite character?" And it's impossible to choose a favorite. But what I can say is that he's the one that I miss the most. He's the guy that I find myself thinking about and wondering. What is, what is he up to? What is he doing? And it's, it's absolutely right. We're, we're, we're a family and we're all in this together, but I think all of us up here, as well as everybody else back at Naughty Dog and everybody who's a, uh, allowed to be a part of this would probably agree with this. This game fundamentally changed our lives um, in, in the best way. Um, and in, in the most real way, yeah, absolutely. Um, but not only as an actor, like I, I, I know the, the, I can demark the moments when we were shooting that I felt myself growing as, as an actor and as a person. Um, the people that it's brought into our lives, the relationships that we've built because of this game. And what's funny is I almost didn't audition for this because I was so mad because I felt like I wasn't right for Joel. I felt like I was too young. I felt like 
I walked into the audition room and there's 20 dudes that look just like Joel. <laughs> and I'll never forget, I literally almost walked out the door and I was heading to the door, the casting director called my name. And I came this close, this close to not being able to experiencing any of this, to not only be not sitting here in this chair, but not knowing Ashley, not knowing Neil, not being able to be a part of this incredible story and this incredible journey, and it was all out of fear. So I think one of the things that I've learned most that this has taught me is don't let fear be the reason why you don't do something. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and I say that knowing that all of us are, there's a level of fear to what we're doing with this because it's scary to come back and revisit a story, especially when it's been so incredibly successful, so incredibly well-received by millions upon millions of people. It's one of the most discussed games that I've ever seen. And it's scary to kind of go back into that because we're walking around with our hearts open and being completely vulnerable. And like Neil said, I would just say, trust us. Just trust, trust everybody at Naughty Dog that we know what we're doing, that we care about this story more than anybody. <laughs> Love you, random person in the audience. <laughs> so when you watch the trailer, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of iconic moments as you go through the, the Firefly logo on the stop sign. Uh, uh, when you walk down the hall and you see, you see the bodies throughout, throughout the house. But the one that struck me the most is the shaking hand. Right? Ellie's shaking hand. And, and that's also knuckles. for anyone who's, not to be too spoiler, but this is also... Uh, you'll, you'll notice the tattoo on her arm as well. So there, there, there's plenty of things there. What, what, can, you, what can you say about what, what it, what, what it, why is she shaking? I know there's an amazing performance that follows, obviously, but, but why, why, is it, why, does she, why does her hand shake? Um, see, this is the part that sucks. <laughs> it's like, we're like, yay, the, there's The Last of Us 2, but we can't talk about anything. <laughs> um, there are reasons. You can. <laughs> she's, she's Which is the lamest answer shit. of all time. She's gone through some shit. What a <laughs> shocker. Uh, I feel like you need to answer this question. I need to answer. I feel like I'll get into trouble. Well, well I'll save you from having right, to answer right. that one. How about that? So, uh, and then you go on to, to the performance, and that is you actually sing Through the Valley Woo! there in that. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing, by the way. Fantastic. <laughs> Great job. Thanks. I know there has to be more than just, hey, so I wrote this song I want you to do. <laughs> I've got this in here. Uh, tell me about what, what that happens when you kind of find out you need to sing. Um, I remember we were talking. I sent you that scene, I think, like two years ago. Yeah, he sent me the scene a couple years ago, and then he sent me this, that, that song, which is by, what is his name? Sean, Sean James. James, yeah. And um, he's like, yeah, I want you to, to sing it. And I was like, <laughs> I'm so sorry, what did you just say? <laughs> and, um, but, you know, I think there's a lot of history with Joel and Ellie and sort of, you know, music and, 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 uh, I'm trying to think of what <laughs> You're treading <laughs> so carefully um, right now, I know. it's amazing. It's, it's, I was definitely very scared to do it. I'll say that, but um, I think it, I, I wanted to make sure that it made sense for Ellie, and, and I think it did, and, and I think it's, it's a, a cool little moment, and we'll see. Yeah, so this scene we started working on about two years ago, uh, so I asked Ashley, I'm like, okay, here's a song I, I want to do, I think it'll be cool, can you send me a scratch track, we just want to cut something together just to see if it works, so she sends me this simple recording she just threw together, and it's so, like, beautiful. Uh, in fact, when, when we listened to it, we're like, it's actually a little too good. <laughs> uh, and we got um, a voice coach, this really great singer, Melissa Reese, who came and worked with Ashley to make her sing worse, so she would sound more like Ellie. So what you're hearing there is like a much worse version of uh, how Ashley can really sing. She's too good. <laughs> too good. No, too good. I think there's, there's definitely, it was, it, was, it was a different kind of acting than I've ever done. Because you, like, you, you sort of try to find a way that a, a character talks, but we don't really get the opportunity to figure out like, how a character would sing. And Melissa was so great with that, sort of figuring out sort of the, 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 the roughness and the edges of, of some of the notes. And um, yeah, it was, it was def I was so nervous because <laughs> I had to go in for some of the rehearsals for it, and then everybody's just like sitting there watching me. And I, they're like, okay, go sing. And I was like, okay, uh, 
I walk through. And then I was like cleaning my clothes. And I was like, this is so embarrassing. But um, we, we, we found it. We figured it out and sort of found the, the, the way that Ellie sings. And yeah. That's great. Well, I, I, I got a little insider info that this is uh, a, a new set of performance capture that you guys are using for this game. I mean, that, that, that you've taken it kind of to the next step. Uh, we even have a little bit of a video to show uh, how this performance has gone. So forward. I guess, yeah, I'll, I'll set this up. Um, so a lot of games, and we do this sometimes, we do uh, digital doubles where you, you cast an actor and you're trying to make it look as close to the actor as you can. Ashley doesn't look like Ellie, Troy doesn't look like Joel, so we had to come up with this different process. So what we did is actually we created digital doubles of them while our artists create a whole new kind of sculpt, a next-gen sculpt of Joel and Ellie. And what you're going to see in this video is like a, a digital double of Ashley with Ellie's texture, so she's going to be very freckled. Uh, and then you're going to see it kind of transform and morph into Ellie. So what we're trying to do is take the performance from the digital double and transpose it onto Ellie. So we could play that. So pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think the detail is striking. Uh, I I as far as the engine as well, you guys have updated that uh, uh, for Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, so as this well. is by far, like, in, within Sony's group, this is the most advanced uh, character model we've ever created. And just the way the flesh can move over the bone and the kind of subtlety we can get in the eyes. Like, we can never cut to a close up of eyes before because we couldn't get the fidelity. Now we can. So I think what's interesting, too, is that you can take these performances and, and, and bring them back to the workshop and meld them to create like the kind of the perfect scene, the, the direct, a, direct a scene unlike you could ever do even in film. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's, in film, like when you want to go between different takes, you have to have a cut in the middle. Here we could actually blend between different takes so we could create a performance. Of course, there's a collaboration with the animators and the, the artists at Naughty Dog. They're definitely a part of, of putting all this together. It's so crazy because this was a full day of just doing Nothing but facial this. movements like this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's weird because they ask you to do things like, I don't know if my face has ever done that before. It's like, can you make this sound? I'm like, I have no idea. We're going to find out. Yeah. But it's crazy because we did, we spent hours on um, like just lip pursts and stuff like that or blinks or, or swallowing. And they would shoot it in like, something like, 150 or 200 frames a second just to get what your face looks like when you swallow, which is crazy to think that that video exists out in the world right now. <laughs> oh, man. And the memes begin. <laughs> um, so uh, we, we've got these characters up here. How does that feel when, you, when you're out there performing? I mean, like, so a, a year and a half ago you shot, and that's the amazing thing, by the way, is that this didn't just happen like last week. You guys, you guys shot this a year and a half ago and have been sitting around waiting to, to show this to us. So I'm sure there's been a lot done on the game since then. We made, we made a little game called Uncharted 4 in the middle there. <laughs> a, little, a little game. A little, a little game. You were also, I think you, you guys opened the show this year for PSX and you also right? closed the show. And that, that's, that, that's the power of Naughty Dog, huh? Right, everybody? And, But I'll, just real quick, I'll, I'll say there was a big discussion within Naughty Dog and Sony about where should we show this Last of Us 2 trailer. Some people were saying we should wait until E3, E3 is bigger. But we're such fans of PSX and being here with the fans and sharing it with you guys. <laughs> that this was the venue for it. There was no other option. So uh, in, in the last game, we obviously played both characters. Can you give us any kind of hints as far as the gameplay, as far as like where will we be? Will we, is Ellie our star in this one, where Joel was our star in the first? Or? Joel was our star in the first. Ellie's a star in this one. Ellie plays different from Joel. I'm getting into risky territory here. Uh, some things are evolution. <laughs> some things are reinventions. But there'll be a gameplay reveal down the road, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm certain. So, uh, as far as playing these characters again, uh, when you find out the story, when you sit down, I, I assume you guys go out to dinner, sit down, and, 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 you, and you hear the story, what, what is it like to, to find, because I mean, you're probably sitting around going, I don't know where these characters are going, until you kind of hear the story. What, what, what is that like? Uh, um, I... <laughs> It, it's heavy. It's heavy. I, I, it's, it, I, I think, I know we're saying it over and over again, but there is such an attachment to these characters in this story and everybody at Naughty Dog and, and 
there's, there was, you know, it's, it was like a, a cocktail of emotions of just being excited to get back into it. Um, I cried just because I'm, I'm just emotional all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but just like I, I, I just, it's... I actually remember this. Like we went to a restaurant uh, and I was like, okay, so we're going to do this DLC called Left Behind. Uh, let me kind of tell you what we're thinking. And that's where we discussed a lot about... Ellie and her sexual orientation and who she is. And, um, and so we kind of walked through the whole story of Left Behind and Ashley's crying at the end. People are looking at us kind of weird, like, that's <laughs> fucked up. This guy brought her here to break up with her or something. <laughs> uh, and then I'm like, well, I have one more story I want to pitch you. It's still early. We're working on it. And I walked her through the story of uh, part two. And she's like bawling by the end of it. <laughs> I'm uh, like, it's too much. <laughs> Don't tell me this now. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's just so great. It's just so great to be back. I mean, I can't, keep, I can't say that enough. I think for me, and again, this is not just like one sit down and let's, okay, let's run over the story with you. This has been a conversation that's been ongoing. And typically in our conversations, it starts off with Neil saying, let me ask you a question. What if, and there's this, this amazing thing. And so what's, to me, I don't, I don't remember just hearing the pitch. It's more about the fact that these guys have allowed Ashley and I to be a part of this conversation, and we've seen the evolution. We have saw the evolution of the first game and where it originally was supposed to end and then where it ended up being, which to me is the most honest, most perfect ending to a video game I've ever seen, ever, 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 ever. <laughs> and which has lent itself so well to, to what did you know, does Ellie know that Joel lied to, to her? And, and what does the okay mean? What happened immediately after? And when we did the one night live thing, it was great because we kind of got to dip our toe in that water and, and see what that felt like a little bit in, in, in the scene that it's not in canon and, and Neil said that specifically, it's not something that, this is well, something completely separate. Huh? Yeah. Go you, ahead, go ahead. You, you said <laughs> this, like, this isn't canon, this is just something here for tonight. Um, I mean, there's my train of thought. But again, it's, it's great to be a part of, of the conversation to see where, how far it's come. And again, it, the trust that we have, there's, there's so much trust between what Naughty Dog trusts with their actors and how much the actors entrust to Naughty Dog and everybody else who's going to do this. They have hired us and they trust us to give them the performances that give you guys and, and give us as gamers the kind of experience that they want to tell. And then we trust them to take what we do and execute that. And so it's just this great symbiotic relationship. But for them to bring us in so early on and for them to bring us into the conversation and allow us to see not only how it'll end up but where it started from, I think is one of the reasons why we feel so attached to this because we have grown with these characters and we have grown with this story too. Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 they're definitely memorable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so at, at Naughty Dog, I mean, I know you guys are always trying to see how do we do, you know, one-up our previous game, and, and how do we do that? And I think the original Last of Us has scenes like the, the giraffe, I, I think, that sticks with, with people. You know, you, you go like, okay, we're going to make part two. Oh, my God, we've got to update, you know, we've got, we've got to one-up that. I mean, how, how do you approach um, looking for those moments that, that define a game like that? I mean, is it, is it as simple as, like, these are going to be defining moments, or do they find you? Uh, it's different for a sequel than the original, because the original you don't have a lot to draw from. It's all kind of fresh ideas. And with the sequel, you could easily fall into the trap of like, okay, the first one was great, and you start operating out of fear of like, okay, we need the giraffe moment, we need the winter sequence, we need the guy that's going to be like David. And I've definitely felt that, like, I don't know if these scenes are going to be as good as that, but you kind of have to ignore all that and say, okay, what is this story? What are the moments for this story? Where are the characters now? They're very different than the characters they were in the first game. And just honor that. Like, there might not be a giraffe sequence. There might not be a character like David, but there will be different moments, and hopefully they resonate as much as the ones in the first game. Yeah, and well, I, I know we all want. Can we play it tomorrow, please? Can we just <laughs> yeah. hurry up? And it's I, available I mean, I now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that's an important thing here that, that you guys are showing this and sharing this very early. I know you have a lot of work. You did just finish Uncharted. Um, uh, do do we have any idea when we when we would maybe see Last of Us Part Two in our Playstations? Uh, we have an idea, but we've learned 
<laughs> now several times <laughs> not to say that publicly until we're confident with that idea. So we're going to hold off on saying when it comes out for a while. The future. It's in the future. <laughs> So I, I, I learned something interesting from you the other day, which was that um, you, know, you had the ends set for both Left Behind and, and the original Last of Us. And as you got towards the end of production and you found yourself kind of getting to the end, that, that, you, uh, that you wanted to find more, that you wanted to get more out of that. So I mean, you guys don't just sit down and make one scene a weekend, <laughs> do the whole game, see ya, you know, let, let, we'll, we'll come back. So how is it when you, when, you, when you come back together, when you're trying to fill in the gaps, when you're trying to find each scene in each area. How, 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 how do you define that and how do you like revisit and, and bring that energy back to that scene when, when you're like, we're going back and doing it again? I think it's important, not just working with actors, but the entire team, that everyone has a full understanding of what, what is the experience we're after. And in very simple terms, what is each beat about? Like when Joel and Ellie are in Pittsburgh in the first game, it's really about the first time Joel is trusting Ellie as an equal. So we're like, okay, what are the kind of set pieces that could get us that? What are the moments that will get us that? What are the mechanics that will get us that? What are the scenes that will kind of get that? So when we kind of, when we capture scenes and we kind of, we will do like these mini arcs, like we'll capture all of Pittsburgh at the same time so that we can kind of wrap our head around it and it's almost like a mini story. And then we'll take a break and implement stuff. Other levels will come online when we feel like we're ready for another sequence, like the winter sequence, we captured all that in one go. It was like, and we, I think we did it chronologically. Pretty much. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's what helps us kind of just like compartmentalize each one of these aspects. And then they slot in, as long as your plan is good and you thought things through, then they can slot in pretty easily with minor adjustments as you're trying to fit it all together. So, uh, so what, when, you, when you have to get direction from Neil, is, 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 he, is he a tyrant on the set? <laughs> no. 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 It's, best. I, I, there's this great shot. Um, my, my wife came to set one day, um, and she's a fantastic photographer. And um, there's a shot that she got of Neil and I, and it's from behind, and it's, it's Neil talking to me, and I'm, I'm gesticulating just like this. <laughs> and it was, um, I think it was when... We were reshooting something, but it wasn't the Sarah scene, but it was something else. But Neil's never been afraid to have a conversation with you and ask you genuinely, what are you thinking? How do you feel about this? Or we need to find a way to get there together. And again, even like we talked about bringing in the conversation, that continues when we're on set together. There's absolutely nothing about a tyrant. He's open to anything. There have been so many bad ideas that I felt really passionate about. And he's been kind enough to let me try them out. He's like, cool, okay, you got that out of your system. Do you want to go back to the way we were doing it? Um, but no, you're, you're, you're the greatest director I've ever worked with, man. Um, Aw. True. <laughs> anybody who's an actor would be privileged to work with you. Yeah. Uh, I didn't actually think you were a tyrant. I, 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 I think the, the more you do this, the more you get confident in knowing that you don't know what you're doing. So yeah. it really is about play. Like we come, we come in to shoot these scenes with an idea. It's like, okay, we think this is how it's going to work. But as you get it up on its feet, you find and discover different things, and you want to remain open to them. So when we sit down, like we'll do a scene, and then we'll talk about, okay, this part. What if we played it this way? This, uh, and let's just see what happens. And a lot of times, that's like we'll talk about it, and then just say, let's just see what happens. Let's just see. And hopefully, we find these little kind of magical moments that then help make it for a richer story. Yeah, it's I. He's. Hands down, one of my favorite directors I've ever worked with. I think because it's, it's just an open, it's so fun. It's so fun working with you. <laughs> and so it's, I, I think that's, it's, it's, it's why I've missed it so much because I think we've built so much trust between all of us to try something that might turn out to be stupid, but you know, he still gives us the freedom to do it. Or, and most of the time, he knows. Like, he'll come over and be like, I know exactly what this is missing. Mm. He won't say it, but he'll be like, try this. And then you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> yes. You think I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, you know. I think about, like, the ranch house scene. I, I, I love talking about that one where Joel, Ellie finds Ellie, or Joel finds Ellie up in the room reading the diaries. Like, is this what little girls, you know, is this what their problems were? And we worked on that scene for hours. Um, 
in like on a TV or film set, you've got a day to make, you've got to go, you have to shoot fast, and you don't really have a lot of time to spend time workshopping, and you need to come prepared, be camera ready, and shoot that scene. But the fact that there was such a freedom to be able to explore and discuss and have contention there, and all of us were feeling like it's good, but it's not perfect, it's not right. And I'll never forget, I asked Neil, I was like, can I just take five minutes? He goes, take 10. And I went up to the back of the, of the sound stage and just kind of sat down. And, and Ashley and I were not frustrated with each other. We were frustrated about the scene because we, we, we felt like we weren't really connecting on it, that we were executing the lines and we were doing the scene justice, but it wasn't perfect. And we came back and something happened. And it's when Ashley stood up and I, I wasn't looking at her. I was looking away. And she said, everybody that I've cared about has left me. Everybody... And she saw that I wasn't looking at her, and she just shoved me, everyone fucking except for you. <laughs> and the scene took off. And it's stuff like that. It's having a director. It's having an entire creative team that's open to, like you said, finding those little bits of magic, as opposed to, I have a day to make, and I really have to shoot these pages. It's good enough. Let's just move on to the next. But going, if we leave here today, and we don't have this scene in the can, that's fine. We'll come back. But we're not going to put this thing away until it's perfect, until it's right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So as you said at the beginning, you know, it's a, it's a story about the performances, the game, the gameplay, and also the music. Uh, 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 can you tell us anything about the, the music? Do we have Gustavo uh, returning? Um, what, what's going on with that? So first game was composed by Gustavo Santolaya. Second game is composed by Gustavo Santolaya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's really amazing. He's like a good friend of mine at this point. Um, again, we, we've, we've been talking now for like a couple of years about this project. He's never done a sequel for anything he's done. And he, he's so prolific and so good. And he just, he has these passion projects and he just picks and chooses, doesn't care about money. Um, so he started writing some new themes for us. Uh, and for this trailer, um, you heard like some new theme in the beginning and then a new rendition of the original theme at the end. Uh, but I think we have a, a short clip that we cut of a new theme for the game that we're going to play for you. Uh, and threw some concept, up, concept art in there that uh, nothing is too spoilery. So you get to see some new stuff. If we have it? Whenever. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think it's 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 one of the things that I, I've 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 had the luck of. I mean, I, I met Naughty Dog a long, long time ago, and and one of the things that they've had from the very very beginning. What we're 25 years. You're now 12 years with Naughty Dog. Uh, you know, they, they've had uh, amazing people working there and and done a lot of amazing things. But the thing that I, I hear Neil say, and I, and, I, and I'm going to repeat here a little bit, is is the passion that runs from every single person at Naughty Dog about their games, about what they're making. Uh, and as you can see here from, from the performers, that same, that same vein uh, runs through those. And I think it shows in the game. And I think that's why everyone loved the original game. Uh, and, and I think that you can already see that passion flowing into this year and a half old sneak peek into what we have to come for, for Last of Us 2. 
I, uh, I want to, th you know, thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk about the game today. I would have loved to have gotten more about the gameplay from you. <laughs> I, I, I know that, that, that that's the secret, but... I mean, you want the Game Informer cover. That's I, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but I, I think my, my, my last question for you would be, like, uh, thus far in the journey, uh, when, you, when you go here and you, and you revisit and you, and you talk about this again, um, I mean, do you think uh, The Last of Us... Um, can exist without Joel and Ellie? I mean, are, are they the last of us? I mean, what, what is your interpretation of what we've, what we've seen and understood so far about the game in the series? Don't look at me. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's so much, they're the heart of it. I don't see it without them. Um, that's, all I can, I, that's all I can really say. It's like they're, <laughs> they're, right, obviously we have the infected and there's the world and there's all these, different factions and how they're trying to eco survival in this world, but at its core, it's about human relationships uh, and this being the most important one in, in the story. So uh, right. that's what it is. Thank you very much. I mean, we're a little early finishing up, but I, I, I think we, we've, we've definitely explored The Last of Us Part Two. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you for your time. Our Thanks pleasure, you. man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Station.